Vanessa. Yes. How does it feel 31 <laughs> years later? Listen, I want people to stop with the numbers, okay? We're like, we want to keep that low. No, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm happy to be alive and healthy. It's astounding to me that it was that many years ago. I mean, I'm here with my 18-year-old, and so, of course, he's never seen it and never seen it in the theater. Um, but it's pretty amazing. I, I was telling someone else, you know, this is all I knew. I was a burgeoning artist in New York. This was my very first feature. I'd done the theater scene and TV and um, was just like really trying to crack the code for Hollywood and trying to, you know, just propel my, my, my career, my life. And, um, and got this movie the old-fashioned way, just went and auditioned, and um, it was really just marvelous to be, I mean, it's so testosterone heavy, right? Mm -hmm. And and to be in the squad with the tough guys and the, and the, and the, and the real, like, power situation, I felt really great about, because some of the other female roles, you know, these were women who were, like, at the, at the sort of mercy of the dudes, and um, I felt like, you know, equal with, with the guys, even though she goes out in a hard way. <laughs> you know, I told kids, you know, that you live by the sword and you die by the sword, so take this as a cautionary tale and don't do what Keisha did. But it, you know, I mean, so many of, like, the, my my lines have come into the, the um, that, that I said in the film have become, you know, iconic and, and repeated. And people ask me to say them all the time. And just the, the beginnings of Chris Rock's career and so many people, um, I see, it was just like astounding and marvelous to work with them in these early, in our beginning stages. And so I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here. Mario has been my brother and our kids came up together. So it's so great to see like our, our kids as, as, as we knew them each other as, as little babies in their strollers. And now they're like married and going off to college. And so it's just, it's just a, a coming home and just a marvelous, exciting thing to be a part of and I feel really blessed and really special. I was gonna say, you would rather talk about this movie or Candyman? You oh, probably, I talk about you them probably, all. <laughs> you know, similarly, Candyman was my second movie and Candyman was the movie that made me go, oh, I can have a life in LA. And um, it was on the heels and the fervor of New Jack City that I decided, well, let me come out and check out California. I'm a New York girl till I die, you know, do or die Brooklyn. And, um, and but I said, well, let me come out and see if there's any momentum that I can conjure up from having done a bunch of work and on the momentum of, of New Jack City and met so many, you know, Keenan and all the creators that were having their, their day and, and got you know, an audition the old fashioned way and booked Candyman and it became this iconic film that I had no idea. Listen, I'm just trying to stay working. Mm -hmm. And then it just, the blessing to have been in such important movies to cinema history, to the the culture, I just feel just wonderfully blessed. And uh, the, to have the opportunity to go and recreate the role mm -hmm. to the like, see we know where Anne Marie is now. and. Yeah. That's been wonderful. And my son, who is also a filmmaker, and my, my other son, they're musicians as well, you know, we're big, big fans of Jordan Peele. And so to get to work with the company that created all the wild imaginative, it was on my list of, um, of things I wanted to accomplish, to work with Jordan and Monkey Paw, and to meet, Di um, to meet um, you know, Nia DaCosta, you know, that they had the wherewithal to like pin her as the filmmaker to nurture this new, this, this, this soulful sequel. It was just marvelous and so intuitive of them to know just how genius she would be, she, the genius that she would bring to interpreting their script and interpreting this, um, this really look uh, at the Candyman legend from the lens of the people of the community. So I feel just really empowered by the work that I've had an opportunity to do because of its significance in my community and the kinds of stories that need to be told from the from the point of view of, of the creators and the people who live the experience, you know, who, who tells the story is so vitally important. And um, I just really am blessed. Well, one more thing before I let you go. Okay, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you know, you're one of the last few people who uh, who remember you know practical effects especially during that wedding oh is my goodness, yes. tell, tell us about that experience practical effects listen I'm a kid of the theater right I'm a, I'm a, I'm a theater uh, thespian and um, and I'm an analog girl right so I'm like looking to my children to keep me current and what have you I mean the thing about effects 
is that it just it, you know the need to create a real sound um, the need to it makes you so inventive and so even though I, I, I there's I was reading something about the filmmaker Wes Anderson how he um, asks his crew to, to, to not use so many of the other technical advances when he's working on film um, to because of the just sort of I don't know, like the juiciness of it being more analog, more makeshift, more fr from the traditional from the traditional means, because we're still humans, and so there's a sort of touch and tactile uh, love of of um, of doing things that way. You know, perhaps my children who don't have the same sort of nostalgia that we would have for um, practical. Um, uh, you know, effects and what have you will, will be able to do some other kind of genius come out of innovation with their technology or this advanced sort of way of doing it. But I don't know, they're, they, they're also my children, right? So they all have a love for the, the practicality of things as well. And so I think maybe there'll be a way to continue to merge them and continue to like, I mean, because all of the new advances are just trying to get back to what the original, you know, sort of pragmatic... Um, practical sounds and ways of filmmaking right so it's just it's just a good time to be alive it's a good time uh, to be working in film and I'm thrilled and excited to see what's coming next in terms of all of the storytellers that are that are out here doing it well most excellent hey thank you very much thank for you so much. have fun tonight thank you I will I plan to thank already you. thank you okay.